Jack here, owner of Hockey Alley, bringing you back hockey history. Today I have NHL legend Brian Prop. How are you, Brian? I'm doing very well. How about you? Good, thanks. This is uh, part two. Uh, I want to get back to you because uh, I know you played in the 87 Canada Cup, and I did want to talk about that a little bit more. Last time it was about the Flyers and... Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was uh, was a very exciting time, uh, you know, for the Canada Cup. Yeah. Uh, when you were growing up, how did you get good? Is my question. A lot of fans and players don't realize what it takes to make it to the NHL. Yeah. So when I was young, like uh, I grew up in a town of three hundred people, uh, Newdorf, Saskatchewan, in Canada. And uh, so, like, my, my dad was a Lutheran minister, and I had two brothers and two sisters, and we're all 13 months apart, so we had our own hockey team. Uh, but my dad taught me the basics of how to play hockey, to skate, and uh, think about of a better player. And so, uh, you know, when I was uh, four or five years old, uh, like, you know, I skated uh, at the start because in, in Saskatchewan it's kind of cold for six months. And so uh, you scan, skate on the ponds uh, until it gets uh, the ice is ready uh, on the outside, in, inside. Um, but yeah, so like, uh, you know, I did, my dad taught me uh, the basics of uh, just, just how to skate and uh, to have fun. And uh, then, uh, then as I got a little older, you know, then it was a little different because then I, I had to practice a little bit more. Uh, but I always played with better teams and a good coaching. So, uh, yeah, at the start, it was a simple life. Uh, you just uh, didn't worry you didn't worry about anything except for just having some fun. Did you practice a lot? Well, we skated uh, like in the, in the in the winter. Like we would skate on the ponds when it got cold, and we we'd ski. Uh, play street hockey uh, for a couple hours every day in the, in the winter. And then, uh, you know, we had a, a rink uh, in uh, Newdorf, uh, like when it got cold in, in December, January, February, and March and April. So, I, you know, I could usually uh, skate uh, more, uh, like after skate, after school, and just uh, make sure that I just I skated a lot. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. It's fun. Outdoor hockey is great for your lungs. <laughs> oh definitely yeah and did your dad play at all or was he just yeah he was he was, he was a really good good player when he when he was uh younger uh but he decided to be, be in, go in a ministry uh so like he like he was he drafted and uh he had a chance to play professional but after you know after time he just there was only six teams and so it was tough to make it and so uh he uh he just decided just to play uh street senior hockey uh where we where we, we grew up and then uh but he, he was a defenseman and uh the, the people had to be careful because he had a good hip 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 shock check hip check but yes like that, so they don't do that anymore no. well not 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 too much anymore no, but no. yeah then in those days uh, you know it was normal yeah i uh, wanted to talk about the 87 canada cup team that's like uh Considered like a dream team in the 92 basketball team that they had, Team USA. I consider about that's the best team that ever assembled. And, uh, you know, Hall of Famers got cut from that, didn't make that team. A lot of names like McInnes, Scott Stevens, Iserman, Dennis Savard, Doug Wilson. These guys didn't even make this team. That's how skilled this team was. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was just, it was the best of the best. Uh, but you know, like at that that year, like in uh, 1987, uh, like we went to the finals in uh, in, in '87 with the Edmonton seven games, and then the, the tournament started in uh, September. Mm -hmm. uh, so like we we were ready to go, and uh, but you know we had a you had a tr tryout. There's lots of people that had to tryouts, but you had to get invited to do that. And for me, it was uh, because I, I was one of the leading scorers in the playoffs in '87. Like the, they, 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 they know me from that. And uh, and then uh, and then uh, Keenan was the coach, and then Bob Clark was a GM, and a couple other GMs. And so you uh, you got invited to to the camp uh, in '87, and then you had to make the team. And uh, a lot of people got caught, caught after that.
So how many guys were there total in in the training camp and the tryouts for that? I think it was about 60, 60 people, okay. and, and then, then then it cut down like halfway after training camp because we had our camp was in Banff in uh, Calgary, and so uh, we, we cut aloft, and then uh, then we probably went down, and so like we probably had about twenty three or twenty four players at the end, mm-hmm. uh, or or twenty five. So uh, a couple of people just uh, got uh, were able to stay just to to be part of it so but it was uh very special yeah was uh mike keenan the one who was making this decisions the coach or was it the, the general manager on that one? well it was a team effort a like team it was uh, i don't think it was uh, mike keenan like that made the decisions but uh the gm and all the team around mm-hmm. them okay you know they they they, they talked about uh, all the better players and and how it made sense because you don't want like all the best players in the world because it's you know like sometimes it doesn't work yeah. you have to have good character players like uh brett uh Sutter and uh Tockett were part of the team yeah. and then you know and so like and Doug Crossman made the team and uh so like it, like it wasn't the best players like uh, all over the world but it was uh, a mix yeah. of the right character p- people that you had yeah. so that's why it made it made it made, made sense yeah character and it's just a perfect what do you call it like a perfect recipe just the best of the best you know all gelling together yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but it was it was nice to have uh, Gretzky and Lemieux on, yeah. on the same line as I did. Yeah, but, that's uh, why. <laughs> that's why having, that, having them together uh, made a big difference. And, and then you had uh, Coffee and uh, Bork and Messier and Anderson and uh, Gartner and yeah. uh, Howard Check and you know you had so, some great players. Yes. And uh, you know, just uh, and Grant Grant Fear was a goalie, and Hextall was a back out. Uh, so uh, you know, just uh, but I think a lot of the guys uh, from Edmonton like were won some Stanley Cups, and so like they're they're good with uh, the team, and they're, like they're skilled, and uh, made a big difference. Yeah, and you know, Gretzky and Lemieux have I think only played twice together. Uh, the Rendezvous '87, which was a. a all-star team that went up against the Russians and then the Canada Cup 87 and you were on their line uh, how was that to play with them well it was good because at, the, the, at that time uh, like uh, I, I was uh, played with most of, most of the time with them and then uh, Keenan would s- switch around to other players uh, later uh, but uh, for me for most of the tournament I, I played left and uh, the, the, the same line. And so I, you know, I just told those guys, uh, "Hey, you guys! Like, uh, tell you what, if I I get you the puck, and then I'll play a little defense, and then we then you guys can go from there." Because, but they were both so good, you know. They had they had like the like the, the points that they got was unbelievable. Yeah. And uh, but you know it was uh, they were so skilled. And uh, then the power play we made a big difference too because they, they're good p- power play players, and uh, so it just. Uh, but for me, it was just me. Uh, I was the oldest guy in the team at that time, mm-hmm. and so like my experience from playing in the wor- World Championships in '82 and '83, and then and being in the playoffs uh, for the last seven years, uh, and made a difference. And then uh, like so, the World Championship and uh, Canada Cups and things like that, but. Uh, you know, I was used to playing uh, overseas, uh, like with the bigger rinks, and then because you have to strategize a little different. Yeah. On this team, who was the team looking up to in the dressing room? Which player did they look up to that was a leader? Well, it was Gretzky. Uh, Gretzky was, and then uh, Bork and Messier and uh, Sutter. Like, okay. uh, the, because, because like these, like, you know, these guys are all winners. And, uh, so it, it was good for Lemieux to see what the, the better, better leaders in the world were like, because he learned from that. So like, uh, and then, so at least he won a Stanley cup and against me in Minnesota when, when 80, 92, uh, but he kind of learned from that experience, what it takes to be a good leader. Yes, definitely. He's a, he got a lot out of it. I'm sure. Uh, and you guys played against the Russians. They had the Russian five, the best five Russians, you know, in their country from that time frame. Who was the best player on that team? 
Well, it was. Uh, I, I liked uh, Igor Larionov because, like, he was a, a key player. But uh, you know, and, and then remember, you got to remember, in 1987, like they, they the, the Russians just played for the tournaments that they wanted to win, the Olympics and the Canada Cup and things like. So they practiced like almost every day for hours, and uh, and then uh, you know, at that time they'd have to defect if they had to to go in the NHL. But after 90. Uh, when they, they, they switched it to a, a draft for the Russians, it made a difference. But at that time, everyone hated uh, Russia and Canada and the U.S. And so, like, it was it was different because you, of what people thought uh, was going on. And so, but, uh, and, and uh, Fede Tip was a good defensive, too. Uh, but they were, they were really good and powerful. Uh, but, you know, so it, uh, it was a tough tournament but you know at least it was the best of three because yeah. now it's it's just you beat one game and then then, it, then, it, then it's over so yeah. it was it was different to have a best of three it was very exciting i did watch those and it was the best hockey i've seen the speed of that game in today's game would just be the same and you guys had the two line pass so, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you know, the, the better players and the Russians were, were t- tough, uh, but uh, but it's quick. And then so like you know, we had good skaters like Gartner and uh, Messier, and, and you know, you name about it, like uh, Hartner, Hartner, like like they they like like it was like the Olympics, like the the speed and everything that was uh, that they were doing. But it was a little 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 different because in the eighties, eighty seven, it was uh, they did hook and haul and hold a little bit more but uh, yeah. play, but they played a physical we, what we did is we played a physical style against them uh, to forecheck them all the time uh, because that was the strategy to to get go in their zone and play in their end because like they're so good with the puck that you if you didn't forecheck then they, you didn't have a chance yeah how was it to play for Mike Keenan over the years <laughs> Well, I loved uh, Mike Keenan because, uh, like, uh, I was one of his better, better players, like, and Mark Howe and, uh, was too. But, uh, you know, he, uh, he put me on the ice most of the time because, like, I played uh, regular uh, power play, penalty kill. So I was on the ice a lot. Uh, but, uh, you know, and, 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 uh, and he knew how I played. I was consistent. Uh, but for, for this tournament, it was a little different because, like you know, they some of the leaders at Edmonton and uh, Lemieux and uh, Gretzky, you know, like they, you know, they they had to, they, you know, because I know at the at the start of '87 Canada Cup, you know, like they, they they ran a couple practices and, and Mike Keenan was running it, and then they were like, no, 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 this isn't going to work for us, you know, you're, you're too strict, strict, and so like you know, they they would they let us like you know, use. Uh, uh, warm outs, uh, like for the, like, uh, practice or things like that every once in a while. And so, so like, uh, Mike had to, uh, realize that, Hey, like, uh, like the better players in the world kind of, you know, have a little say. Yeah. Which uh, players did he let play the way they want? Was it the whole team or most of the team or certain guys? Well, it was it was a team effort, but you know Gretzky and Lemieux, like 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 if they needed a goal, I mean they 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 would get out a, a little bit more, or you know, but uh, you know, all the the better players were were top leaders in the team, mm-hmm. so that's why, like you know, at that time, like I was one of the leaders for the Flyers, and I you know. I, proven to win, to win and and to score and to do things and play defensively play two-way hockey and kind of kind of figure out what's going on uh, but you know usually the, the the two better players like you know they they, they were able to can control everything that was going on and, and then also you know like for the defense partner part pairings yes. like the, another another part of the team kind of led the the defense uh, pairings so they had their own was it bork well bork and coffee, coffee and yeah. uh rochard and uh crossman and uh you know so like you know like the, you know, some some really good 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 defense yeah and what were besides for checking the russians was there any other strategies did you guys have to shadow certain players no no i think that you you, you knew that uh you know like 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 the defensive player but you know when you get get to that level 
everyone's a good player. And so you, you pair like the guys that you want, like, like the, the top five Russians, like maybe, you know, they put Gardner and, uh, Saddle Sutter uh, together to, to kind of play a little better defense, and uh, of course the defense uh, on the side like Hartner, Hart, Hartford, and uh, and uh, Rochard did a good job of playing good defense. Uh, so uh, you kind of match a little bit when you when you can. Yeah, and I want to ask you: so, how many Game Seven finals uh, have you been in over the years? Well, I, I was like, you know, in 80, we lost in six games, and in 85, we lost No, in no, like five game, game seven, game seven. Uh, the, uh, oh, like, I, yeah, I, I don't remember, but, you know, I was probably in a few, few. game sevens. Like, I know probably the, the biggest, the best uh, time that I had was in 87, and we, we game, uh, game seven against the Islanders in the second round. Where I had three points, and then that we knocked them out, and then, and then so like yeah, but you know a few times, but most of the time we 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 would win in uh, five or six games, mm -hmm. and uh, don't have to worry about uh, game sevens. All the kids in road hockey or street hockey or anywhere, they all dream of game sevens. Is there a different strategy playing a game seven than your other games? What is the strategy? Well, you know, for me, it was to be, to be consistent and to and, and don't be afraid to make a mistake. And so, like, uh, that's why I always one of the better players because I like the pressure. And some of the p players that I know don't like the pressure. And so you have to figure it out pretty fast. But, you know, you, you know that it's, it's a really expensive uh, good to, to be a, uh, the better players when it counts. Yeah. And so that's why in the playoffs, like I was in five Stanley Cup finals and the, the number one all time left wing uh, scorer for the playoffs. Wow. So that I learned pretty, pretty fast, like what it takes to win. Yeah. And you know what worked for you, too? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, you know, you, 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 you had to uh, prepare every game the same way and, uh, you know, not be afraid of making a mistake. And so, and you have, you have, you have lots of uh, you know, coaches that will t tell you what's going on. And, uh, but, you know, you, it's up to you as, as a player to, to get it uh, accomplished. Yeah. And on the finals in 87, I did watch that finals. That was an exciting playoffs. Really exciting. It was pretty a tough battle. What was the strategy against the Oilers? Were you uh, any of the players were supposed to shadow anybody out there or for the Oilers against the Oilers? Well, when, when we were at home, we'd we'd like to. If Gretzky was on the line, we'd used to have to. We we try to line up with uh, Sutter. Uh, so the Sutter, you know, they 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 play play a little defense, but you know, it's, it's really tough to. To play against Edmonton at that time because there was like six or eight in their Hall of Fame of prime, and so. But uh, we played good defense, and then of course Hextall played. He uh, was a VM and MVP of the uh, playoffs that year because he was a rookie year. Uh, but Mark Howe and Brad McCrimmon were were two of the best players uh, played to play defense with uh, against Gretzky because you know like they shut him down every once in a while. Uh, but it, you know Edmonton was so powerful like you you always had to know that they're going to have high scoring games and so if you don't score then you're you're, you're kind of out of it. Uh, so uh, and they were so talented that it, you know you you you, you thought like, you'd have to score at least three goals or more to to beat them. But yeah. And you guys went into uh, end of June, so you didn't have much break before this uh, Canada Cup, right? Because it was started in September of 87, and you guys just ended the playoffs end of June of 87, so it wasn't much break. Yeah, yeah, but at that time, like, you're, you're sort of used to playing hockey that you're still in good shape, like, as mm -hmm. most of the people that are, uh, don't make the playoffs in April – and, and May, like, they have to start working out again. And so mm -hmm. for us, it was a little easier because, you know, we were in good shape from playing uh, until end of uh, June. And so uh, just you take a little break, but then uh, get right back at it. Yeah, it's amazing. You guys are amazing. Those, those were the best times for me to watch hockey. The uh, late 80s into the 90s, like, really good hockey. I just like the, 
toughness of it. Uh, what about when you guys played, when you were with the North Stars, you guys went to the finals against Lemieux. What was that like? Was that the same intensity as it was against the Oilers, would you say? Yeah, yeah, because, uh, like, you know, in, in Minnesota, like, and then plus in, for Boston, like, uh, the year before, like, we went to the finals against uh, Edmonton, too. That's right. Uh, so that was a, the first game was triple overtime. The, the lights went out, and then it went into Traver, tri, triple overtime, which really hurt us because Klimo, who just he's, he, he just was on the ice for like uh, it wasn't on the ice for like a, a couple periods, yeah. and then he scored the game winner. So that, that really hurt us at the start because and then Edmonton was too strong after that because uh, Belfort played so well. I mean, it's tough to score, and uh, and then Edmonton had the experience so like they they knew how to win and then so like for us it was it was you know, disappointing but uh, and then when i went to minnesota you know we were one of the the, the last least favored teams and then we beat the, all the number one team in chicago and then number two team st louis and then the oilers and then we went against pittsburgh and so we won the first game and but unfortunately the lemieux kind of took over game five and six where he kind of figured up enough's enough, and uh, he, he was unbelievable. And then you had Yager. Yager scored that one goal. Was that again? in the finals, right, where he went through three players? Was oh, that, that, no, that was, that was Lemieux. That was oh, that was Lemieux. Okay, there was another one that Yager did, and he said that was the best goal of his life. But Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I don't it think was, it was in your series, yeah. maybe. It was in the earlier series. Yeah, yeah. Remember. It was uh, a long uh, time ago. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, but Lemieux, like he, he kind of took over, yeah. and plus they had good, good teams too, Pittsburgh, and so uh, you know, for us it was disappointing that we didn't get to the game seven, but yeah. uh, you know, at least at the same time we were there and yeah. uh, we worked, worked, worked really hard. Yeah, at least you got to experience that. That's you know, a lot of people would dream of playing in those, and it just doesn't happen for everybody. It's awesome. And it's awesome that you got to play with Lemieux and Gretzky. That's a bit, that's a best. That's as a dream for everybody <laughs> to to play on the be two best players in the world right there. It's awesome. Oh yeah, that's yeah, awesome. yeah. It, wow. was, it was it was fun for me at that time because yeah. uh you know the Canada Cup was special because you you're playing for your own country like yeah. uh because and there's a couple of people from the US that uh, defected like Brett Bird Hall went to the US and then yeah. uh, a couple others for via but you know at uh, Russian against uh, Canada was, was special because the game was in Hamilton uh, Ontario and so like there were all these fans in, in Hamilton that you know a pause also be you know game three because all games uh, was score six to five yeah we lost the first one six five and then we went in overtime we won this second overtime and seven seven six to five and then I was on the ice for that uh, with Lemieux and Gretzky and then and then to force a game seven and then the game three we were down three nothing within 10 minutes of the game wow. and we yeah. We we came back from that, so that was uh, special too. Yeah, that was, a, and the ending was uh, the best too. The final final play when uh, Lemieux and Gretzky went down and scored the fi game winner it was uh, like about a minute and something left in the game, and it was, yeah, it was a, a little bit more than a minute. Yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, but maybe maybe uh, Harichuk was uh, the the center, and so I mean he might have hooked uh, one of the defensemen down. So like we might have got away with one. Yeah, but still, it was a great ending. <laughs> yeah, I want. So, also, you have a website. Can you please tell me about that? Yeah, yeah. So, like, uh, you know, like just this last week, like I just started with uh, the top uh, solar uh, company uh, called Power Power P O W U R dot com slash Brian Dat. Prop. Uh, so, like, uh, I'm, I'm doing solar all over the U.S., mm -hmm. and so if anybody wants more information about that, uh, that, that's pretty exciting for me. And then also I have my own uh, cigar brand, the Gaffa Cigars. It's uh, gaffacigars.com, and, and I've got my uh, brianprop.com website. And then also, like, for the people that want merchandise, like, the, there's another company in Canada called millions.ca so like if they want to buy my t-shirts and hoodies and hats 
for my Gaffa uh, or my Gaffa cigars, they can go to the website uh, millions.co and then order from there. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I want to thank you, Brian, so much for coming on and talking to me for, about the Canada Cup. It was great to hear what you have to say about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for having me. You're welcome. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Yeah.